Hello everyone. Welcome to another tutorial of uh, MongoDB series. My name is Jairaj and uh, thanks for joining again. So in previous tutorial, we have discussed about a few important things uh, such as Mongo shell commands, Mongo database, Mongo collections and uh, document. And uh, from this tutorial, we will uh, start our CRUD operation discussion with create operations. So let's get started. <music> Before starting this tutorial, I want to mention one thing. Uh, I found this a few days back, but it was interesting. So I thought, let me share it with you. So they have made a song for MongoDB database skills that call uh, CR Chip Thrills and uh, enjoy it. Welcome back to Sales Kickoff 2017. Hey, MongoDB has got a new offering. It's called Atlas. Have you heard of it? Why, yes, I have. It's got a great beat. <laughs> Take it away, Sia. database on it's friday night and you can't take long gotta get your deployments and your data on it's friday night and you can't take long till you hit production hit production we got what you need now you're out of cash but we act fast look on amazon baby baby i know your database needs upgrades tonight we got those skills baby i know your database needs upgrades tonight so that was interesting and uh, i will put link into the description so you guys can enjoy and uh, don't forget to comment about that video so back to our discussion let me start our mongo server with brew command because i am on mac right now and if you are on windows then you will you will have a mongod command to start the server so for that brew services start mongodb community at 4.2 and our server is started and now i need to fire mongo mongo command to start mongo shell and to connect with it so here i didn't pass any credentials because we are using mongo in our local but if you are using our mongo cluster or anything then you need to pass those credentials so we are connected now and let me make this bigger so you can see this and let me do Control k to clean the mongo shell so now I am in the database and let me do something like show DBs. So we have this test database and use test to select that test database. So I am in test database right now and if I do show collections, I can see we have this books and employee collection. So we are going to use this employee collection right now and we will put all the details here in this collection. So here in my Mongo shell, if I ask for help on the collection with something like db.employee, dot help then i can see we have so many functions so let me make this smaller so you guys can see it we have so many different kind of functions here so same way if i ask for help on db db dot help not on the collection then this will give me the functions of databases not of their collections so all of these functions are javascript functions written for various functionality on database or on collection so we insert data into collection not in the database so as you can see here, we have this insert functions for employee collection. But if you go in database, we don't have those insert functions, right? Same way we have this uh, user related functions or collection related functions for database, but not here because we cannot create a user for collection. We can create user for database. So I mean to say is these are the specific functions created for database or for collection inside the Mongo shell. And uh, to perform various operations, we'll use these functions. But uh, let's say if you want to see how these functions are written, then we can see the code about it by not making the function call. So let me do control K to clean the screen and let me make this little bit bigger. And here if I do db dot employee dot insert, but I am not using parentheses like this. So if I call this function without uh, this parentheses, then in JavaScript, it will return me the function itself. It, it won't execute the function. So if I hit enter, you can see here it is giving me the uh, code of the function. So this way you can learn more about how these Mongo functions or Mongo shell functions working internally. And uh, also one thing to note here is that if you remember our previous uh, tutorial when we have seen how MongoDB works, we have discussed that uh, Mongo shell interacts with Mongo server with TCP IP connections and passes various instructions to the server. 
So same way if we are using any application drivers such as uh, Java MongoDB drivers or Py Mongo for Python, then those drivers can interact with server directly. So these are the functions for Mongo shell and it can be different for your drivers. So for example, if you are developing a Spring Boot application with a Spring Data Mongo, then these functions can be different over there. So I suggest that always prefer your driver documentation for updated and correct information. But the working of MongoDB server is not gonna change. So fundamentals of Mongo is same. And additionally, MongoDB developers or the driver developers try to keep or try to develop all drivers in Mongo shell with same kind of functions and method structures. So that way it is easy for us to learn. So that's why majority of the cases you will find the functions are same in drivers as well as here. So moving ahead to our create or insert operation in CRUD. And uh, for that, let me do control K to clean this shell. Let me make this little bit bigger so you guys can see. So in Mongo shell, we have three functions to insert documents. We have insert, we have insert one and we have insert many. So first let's start with insert function. So again, if I do this employee.insert without this parenthesis that I can see the code of it and how this function works. And you can see here, this function is taking two argument. One is object and one is options. So first one is object and uh, that object is the document that we want to store or it is an area of the documents if we want to store uh, multiple documents. And another argument is options and these options are optional so we don't need to worry about it much if you don't know more about it. You can pass on the document and it will work. So let me do this control K to clean the shell and now for example if I have one employee something like this where we have first name Tony, last name Stark which also known as Iron Man. And this employee I want to store then this way I can pass the document with this curly braces and if I hit enter then I can see one document is inserted and if I do db dot employee dot find and I can see this document is here and one more thing to know about these insert functions is if that collection doesn't exist then this function will create that collection automatic so let me drop this uh, employee uh, collection and we know from our previous tutorial how to drop this collection like this and if i do show collections then i can see we have only books collection we don't have employee anymore and now if i fire this insert command same insert command and if i hit enter i can see one document inserted and here if i do show collection i can see this employee collection got added here so this way this insert function also can add collection into our database. So moving ahead, let's say you want to store multiple documents and then you can pass the array of documents something like this. And here for array, we have these square brackets to represent the array and inside there we need to pass this document which is comma separated list of document. If I fire, it returns bulk write object with various values and uh, that values gives us information about what happened inside. So how many documents got inserted, how many updated, how many errors, how many modified or removed and that kind of information. So moving ahead, if I do db.employee.find, then I can see all of my four documents which I added previously. So one thing to note here is that uh, we can see that one more field, this underscore ID got added here. And uh, we know that this is system generated ID by Mongo. But let's say we don't want uh, the system generated ID, we want our own ID. So in that case, we can uh, fire command something like this, where I pass underscore ID as of my own ID. So let's say I pass two here and I'm adding this Natasha Romanoff, also known as Black Widow in this ID number two. And if I fire this, I can see one document inserted. And now if I do find again, I can see one more document with my own object ID. So moving ahead, uh, let me add Natasha's best friend, Clint Barton, with the same ID, something like this. And if I hit enter, I can see here that Mongo is giving me error, which is duplicate key error correction. So here Mongo is trying to tell us that uh, ID should be unique and uh, ID number two already exists in the data. So we cannot add a new document with this underscore two. So let's say if I add the same document with ID number three, then I should be able to insert that document. Let me do this control K and if I do find document, then I can see we have two and three both data inserted here. So this is very basic insert operation that we can do with this function. And the second argument in this function is also an object and inside this object we have two possible values. We have write concern which is a level of acknowledgement we request from the Mongo and this one is little bit advanced right now. We will discuss this later. But also it is optional so we don't need to worry about it. If we don't pass it then Mongo will take a default value of it. 
and second value inside the document is order flag which is a boolean value true or false and by default mongo takes it true so when we have uh, multiple documents to insert in that case we can control insertion order and uh, by default inserting document will be true that means order will be maintained always so for example if we have five documents to insert and order is true something like this so in that case mongo will start inserting documents one by one so it will start with the first document then second and then third and like that so if let's say a third document uh, have some problem and error occurs in that case mongo will stop inserting documents after that that means first two document will be inserted and third four and fifth will not so in our case this third document with id equal to 2 is a problem because id with a value 2 already exists in our database so in mongo after 2 it, it should give us the error so if i hit this then you can see here this uh, bulk write result is giving me the error and this is error in this id with 2 and it is the same error which is duplicate key error collection and as you can see here only two document got inserted so here first and second one bruce banner and loki got inserted and the third fourth and fifth didn't so let me do this control k and if i do this uh, find then you can see here we have this bruce and loki got inserted but other three value didn't get inserted here but if we put false in order something like this and also we have third document with this id 2 again so in this case mongo will skip document with error and it will insert all the, all the rest of the document so as you can see here number two have a problem again duplicate key error but here inserted count is four so this way rest of the four document got inserted and now if i do find i can see all the four got inserted here where we have this ant-man captain marvel and star lord and rocket raccoon so this way this insert function is very useful in various purpose and we can control so many things with it moving ahead we have this insert one function and uh, this function as name suggests it only stores one document and again it has uh, two argument so first one is a document that we want to store and this time it is the only document it is not an object or it is not an array and uh, second argument is again an option but this time this option only take right concerns there is no order flag in this function because uh, if we think logically right we are storing only one document and uh, order doesn't make any sense for one document so there is no order if it is error then it is error if it is not then it will store the document so for example we can use this function something like this and here we can pass uh, our document same way we passed before and here if i hit enter and as you can see here this insert one function returns a little bit different uh, data here so if you remember our insert function used to return a lot of different uh, count numbers and how many documents got modified and stuff like that but this function is uh, returning us acknowledgement flag and insert id so you can reuse this id if you want and the rest of the other functionalities like uh, using id as a unique or if collection doesn't exist then it will create collection those kind of functionality will be same with insert and insert one functions and moving ahead we have insert many function which is again same as insert function where we store multiple documents at a time and here also it has a two arguments one is document one is options and internally it is using the same kind of logic so the difference between this insert many and insert lies in the return object so insert function returns a right result object which gives us information about how many document inserted or how many errors is there but insert many functions returns object with acknowledgement flag and IDs of all inserted document. So for example, I can use this function like this where I need to pass again a list of documents and we need to pass the array. So if I hit enter, I can see that it is returning acknowledge true flag and insert IDs. So these four document got added with these four IDs. So this is very useful. So for example, if we have a blogging site and someone publish a blog, and uh, to create that blog entry in Mongo, we, we fire this post API with this uh, insert function. And in the response, we need to send a URL back to the user and uh, that URL points to the newly created blog. So in that case, we use this insert one or insert many where we don't need to make an extra call to get these IDs back because this function uh, returns these IDs automatically. And in case of error occurs, it returns bulk write object, which is same as insert function object. So for example, if I fire this value with this ID2, which is an error again, right? If I fire this, it is giving me the same result as our uh, previous functions. So this way, these insert functions are very useful in that kind of scenarios. And another difference is the support of explained function. So this explained function or command gives us information about our operation on Mongo, such as how much time it took or how many documents it needs to search or stuff like that. 
So for example, here if I do db.employee.find with explain function with this execution stats. So don't worry about this, I'll explain this later. But if I do something like this and if I hit enter, you can see we have so many important information. So let me make it smaller. And if you can see here, we have execution time in millisecond, total document scan and stuff. We have a return result uh, information. So many useful information is here. So we will discuss uh, this explain uh, function in detail in upcoming tutorials. So don't worry about this. But for now, just keep in mind that insert one and insert many function don't support this explain method. And additionally, there is one more thing to discuss is db dot is master. So let me clean the shell. And if I do db dot is master, if I hit this function, I can see some useful information here. And for us, max write batch size is very important. And uh, this uh, number is representing that number of documents per batch allowed in write operation. So let's say if you try to insert 200,000 documents in one shot, then Mongo will divide this operation into two separate batches of 100,000 each. So reason for this dividation is that when, when you insert so many documents together, then Mongo needs to return you back some output, some response, right? So in that case, the returning response, returning object is too big, too huge to handle. And that is why internally Mongo is dividing this. But don't worry because 100,000 is also a huge number of documents at a time. So this was three methods we used to store documents. And in addition to this, we have few update methods that we can use for insert functionality also because most of the update methods also support absurd function. For example, our update method, right? So in this update method, if you use this update method with absurd flag true, that means is it will search for the document to update in the collection. And if none of the document matches, then it will create a new document. So we can insert a document like this also. So we will discuss them in our upcoming tutorials. So that's all for now and see you in next tutorial. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also put your questions and suggestions in comment box. And don't forget to watch that song because we have our own way for fun. And uh, see you in next one. And till then keep learning. Thank you very much. Thank you.